Well, hello, my Maverick Currency Traders. Welcome to the Currency Recap. Joe with you here. It's the 17th of October. It's a Thursday. Let's get into it. You guys know this drill. I'm going to take a look at the meaningful news of the day, see what happened. Well, let's take a look at some stuff technically, and then, hey, if there's some trades out there, I'm going to go ahead and share them with the community. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. As we move into the market analysis, folks, you're going to see that we have kind of a continu continuation, I should say, of the same thing. There's not a whole lot to go off. We do have a lot of currencies that once they start to diverge, they converge. And what means is everything's falling. Hey, let's jump into this bear trade. And then it bounces the same time that our bull trade pulls back. It's been frustrating. Well, let's get into the news. We had the Aussie employment numbers. Uh, they did show strength, reducing the expectations of a rate cut, both in uh, employment and unemployment. Just saying, hey, you know what? Uh, Australia is doing a little bit better than expected. Sent the Aussie a little bit higher today. Not a ton. I mean, over 0.5%, over but uh, enough to actually push it higher. U.S. retail sales and the Philly Fed manufacturing numbers also stronger than expected. Kind of agreeing with the flat land, or excuse me, with the soft landing that the Fed is actually already expecting which is why I don't think the markets really gained much. They were moving higher and uh, halfway through the day, they kind of pulled back, closing pretty much flat. Um, but it wasn't really met with good news or I should say it wasn't met with a positive reaction or a negative reaction. It just seemed to kind of, okay, well, where do we go from here if everything's kind of on track and in line? And I think that's probably the biggest problem that I'm seeing with the currency markets overall. This is how we finished. The yen down 0.4%. U.S. dollar flat, franc flat, euro flat, pound, a little bit of a pump uh, to the upside. But then again, the New Zealand dollar actually pushed a little higher. Now, folks, we were looking at a pound uh, Kiwi trade a couple of days ago, and it looked great. But what happens is when these things start to push and pull against each other, they just don't really pan out. It becomes a very difficult place to trade. Uh, the CAD down 0.3% or 0.31%, and it's difficult because it's tied to oil, and that's been all over the place. But the only one that was of note that kind of followed through suit, which what we would have expected was the Aussie dollar, 0.62% uh, based on its news. News is difficult to play, and then we have to decide what to pair it with. It's just a difficult market to trade right now. SPX, the world index, crypto, gold, big bump up in gold, and I think it's because the U.S. markets were flat, and there's a little bit of a flight to safety there, and then oil stagnant for the first time in a long time. Now, crypto, I thought was pretty interesting, folks, because it was only one that moved higher, and that was uh, Litecoin, and it, it, it's got an ETF tracking it. That's all this is. This isn't anything to do with anything beating once in, uh, one over the other. This is just Litecoin with an ETF coming out, and this has been a couple of days coming, and we've seen this move. I mean, 3.75% was big, but it's been over the last little bit. Ethereum flat, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin itself also flat. Cryptocurrencies have actually been the, the, the uh, larger movers. We've seen some movement in it more to the upside, but this um, Litecoin, I'll show you the chart today for fun. Um, I'm not sure if it's just a one and done event, but it did create a, a pretty cool pattern that we might be able to trade. So let's take a look at the overall market outlook, guys. I've got it at a plus two, and it's just because I see a little bit of consolidation. Well, let's zoom into the chart real quick, and it's just this area here. I love it. I mean, it's. I, I'd like to stay plus three. This is a super, super strong chart. It's been strong for a while. Very nice ascending triangle pattern that broke um, a little while ago. And then we had this high base, which broke. And we're looking to kind of do another high base. It is super strong. I don't know what else to call it. Um, I, I dropped it from a plus three to a plus two just because of some hesitation in the candlesticks that I've seen as of late. And hey, you know what? Hey, tomato, tomato, you guys could keep it at a plus three. I would not disagree with you. Gap up, trade down, uh, moves higher. A gap up, trade down. It just seems like there's a little bit of resistance up at this area. And I imagine it has a lot to do with the political outlooks or what's coming here in the next, geez, about a month, um, along with uh, some worries moving forward with what the Fed's going to do. And we can create our own drama based on what's going on. But overall, 
these markets are comfortable at these levels. And I think that's all I'm going to take from this. I'm not going to try to speculate or go any deeper than that. Currency wise, folks, it's actually been difficult because we're not seeing a whole bunch of movement. Let's move over to the economic calendar here. And uh, these are kind of the things that I'm seeing driving. We're seeing an absolute reaction to what should happen. Look at this. That's great. Employment change is super high. Unemployment rate drops uh, from an expected increase of 4.2%, showing that, hey, Australia, or at least the Aussie dollar is going to stay pretty stable as people are, 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 they've got jobs, they're adding jobs, they're doing all right. Sure, there could be a slowdown, but it's not yet, which is enough to move the uh, Aussie dollar a little bit higher. Here's the U.S. side of things. We've got a strong Retail sales number, expectations were a, a, a 0.1%. It was actually higher than that, and that's fine. Whatever inflationary worries are there, we also have a retail sales number that agrees with the core, also bumping up, maybe not as much. This is probably a better gauge, uh, smoothing some things out when it comes to some of the volatile things that increase and decrease in price. But overall, nice and strong, nice and stable. Then we did have a Philly Fed manufacturing index that jumped up quite a bit. Now, this one is a little bit more volatile than some of the others. This was already expected to jump pretty high, and it jumped a little bit higher. It, it, these, this is very seasonal. Uh, it has a lot to do with uh, the cost of the manufacturing. When we see a drop in energy, and then we, we, we relate it to manufacturing, that's going to have a huge impact. But overall, it's showing a soft landing at least. We got some retail sales uh, out of um, Great Britain. But past that, I, I don't think there's going to be much that's going to move these markets. Uh, it's been super difficult uh, unless there is an economic event tied to the currency specifically uh, to pair something against it. So, folks, let's just go down and let's go through and break down a currency analysis. I'm going to do a, a couple, but I'm going to focus on the ones that are the strongest, the weakest. And once again, there's just not that many there. Starting with the end, you guys can see, hey, it's been weak. It's been weak for a while. Uh, velocity wise, this is what's happened today. I do like the fact that this has moved lower. Uh, we got a flip on the star here, a kind of a flattening moving average, but this RSI has actually sloped a little bit lower. So I'm going to head and keep this in the negative territory. Uh, I think we had a negative one. I'm going to just drop this to a negative two. And why so is this, this weakening momentum uh, along with a flip of the star. I can't get much out of that moving average, but I do like the overall motion of the ocean on this thing when it comes to uh, continued weakness. Let's jump over to the dollar, and the dollar's actually been the outperformer for quite some time. It's super strong, uh, moving it up to a plus two. And the only reason I'm moving it to a plus two is because I'm seeing a little bit of flattening here on the RSI, which is fine. It's to be expected. This could be something that we could pair to something weak. The problem that I have, folks, is if you get caught in something like this, it will flip on you. So it's like, okay, can I do something, you know, the US dollar against the yen? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, today we would have been all right. But tomorrow is a different story. In fact, since I'm on the topic, folks, let's just jump straight over to it. I want to take a look at uh, the pound New Zealand dollar. And this was a wonderful chart a couple of days ago. We had a nice ascending triangle pattern going on, or I should say a high base breakout. Uh, or, uh, well, let me zoom in a little bit better on this, folks, so we can get the whole story. But I just loved this trend. It was moving higher. We had this resistance level here, uh, and it broke out of it. But what ends up happening the same day when you get the pound increasing and the Kiwi increasing, you get stuck in what I call this kind of no man's land, which it goes right back into this range, this drop through here. So could have triggered, could have worked. I love the fact that Rob brought this up a couple of days ago and finished by saying if he had to, he would make this trade, but there is no follow through. It's just back and forth. It's a guess. Now, if there's a way to play this range bound or sideways, it's doing exactly that. But past that, I'm just not seeing any sort of conviction in direction for anything past a day. And it's super frustrating. All right, well, let's go back to... Uh, Breaking these down, here's the franc, barely down today. I'm going to keep it at a negative one, but it's really not doing much. We've got sideways here, uh, kind of just a little bit lower. Uh, the euro, uh, it slipped a little bit. I'll go negative two uh, just because it flipped the star. We got a little bit of a drop here in the moving average, but what do you pair this with? Uh, it's not going to be anything that's going to be sustainable. Here's the pound. The pound is 
it was, it, it's been my favorite for the stronger part of things, but it, this push pull, it's always up and then it's down and it's up, it's down. Look at this. Flip the SAR, flip the SAR, flip the SAR. But look at the moving average. It's done nothing. It's uh, more of a guessing game out there, folks. All right, the last one we'll make note of, and it's the Aussie. That's because it had the biggest move today, uh, up uh, quite a bit. And it just came off of a, uh, a pretty aggressive move to the downside. Now, this is on the velocity score. If I take this out to something a little bit more substantial, like the daily chart, you can see it's actually got a very nice pullback at this area. So I like this area. It's trying to sustain a little bit of sideways. It's flattening out that moving average. If it can flip the SAR and move higher, this is where I'm going to be comfortable uh, pairing the Aussie against something if it gets there. Now, that's going to take a while, and it might push pull before it gets there. So this might take two days. It might take a week. I don't know, but I'm going to make sure that something confirms enough to where I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Past that, I'm done playing this little micro game because it's really not gaining any traction. The last one of note is obviously Litecoin, and it's because news behind it. We got an ETF tracking it, but it is a really strong pattern. It looks great. This is the daily on it, but let's take a look at the four hour chart because it's got the same volatile, or I should see velocity on it. It is breaking higher. It looks pretty decent. Nice push to the upside. How long does this play out for? I don't know. These things are super volatile. This could immediately flip over, but as far as an ascending triangle goes, or if you want to call it a high base breakout, uh, this is definitely outperforming. So overall, folks, not a lot of change. Some slid higher, some, some slid lower. I mean, the biggest I see, the biggest mover right here is going to be Litecoin uh, because it announced its ETF and it was a massive surge in the, in the, in the cryptocurrency itself and it broke out of uh, a high base. Uh, that's basically my possible trade. That's all I've got. We took a look at the pound kiwi that looked really good and it failed. It, it rolled right back over. A lot of the currency trades that I've made personally have fizzled out and done nothing. Not like they've turned to losses, but they just never panned out. And so it's difficult uh, to uh, look for anything that's gonna be sustainable for two or three or four days. Now, if you're a intraday trader, four hour chart, one hour chart, 15 minute chart, it really is gonna be if you can catch it and that's it. And so if you do catch it, just make sure that you monitor it as you're supposed to and keep a tight stop on it and look to scalp out uh, pretty quickly because they do not last for very long. It's just a tough environment to trade. So in conclusion, guys, the crypto has been the most active this week. Uh, maybe some political posturing going on, uh, but it is difficult to find pairs for multi-day moves. Uh, that's a fact. Uh, if you guys want to be intraday, you got to wake up early. You got to see what's up, what's down and just go to work. Wait for things to break above resistance or below support levels. Throw that bad boy on. Have your targets set and adjust those stops because you're not going to be in for very long. Just difficult uh, trading environment overall. Play relative strength and weakness. If you guys are intraday traders, that's great. Just keep it tight and don't expect big, big moves. Uh, take, what can, take what you can get if and when you can get it. If you're going to go throw some darts, just make sure that those darts don't hurt you. All right, folks, that's what I've got for today. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.